Welcome, Michael. Welcome to the Prime Computer Business Talk. I'm really, really glad to have you today here. And um, I would like for you to introduce yourself so our listeners and viewers can have an opinion of who you are and why you're here. Cool. Great to see you, Sasha. Uh, always fun to see you. Many things going on, and I'm also looking forward for the chat we have here this morning. So who am I? Um, three thoughts on who am I. One, I'm a proud European and an optimist. So what does that mean? I'm born, raised, grown up in uh, in Germany, spent half of my uh, life in Germany, but now the other half, literally the other half I'm spending in Switzerland, which is too different, but obviously, as you know as well, there are differences. And then I have the opportunity to spend also a growing amount of time in Spain. So I look at things through different angles, in particular in times we're in right now, it is so uh, interesting to see how different countries which are so close together are dealing different with things. And then I'm an optimist. What does that mean? I I don't know, I just love looking for opportunities, right? We are in really tough times, there are many challenges, many changes, many people have concerns, and that's all true. But I believe in every challenge and in every situation is an, is an opportunity. And I love to do that, looking for ways how to move forward and, and being an optimist. The uh, the second thing is I'm driven by vision and significance. So I love based on the on the challenge to think big and, and dream big and, and, and with this one think and ideally work on things which matters. So I'm, I'm more for, for the so the biggest things if any possible. And uh, and the last thing, so what I do um, with my time after literally 30 years in corporates and big companies with big teams, I'm an entrepreneur, got my own company. I'm, I'm working with startups and young companies where I'm either invest in advice, sit on the board or try to help them growing and take a significant role. Oh, thank you so much. This was a great introduction. And what I love most about you is uh, your positivity and your optimism towards uh, the challenges that we all face. And as you always mentioned, in every uh, challenge or crisis, there's an opportunity. And that's what I really uh, like about about your uh, uh, personality. So when we met, you always you told me that when you're engaging in a project or a company, that you actually have three defining criteria where you decide if it's actually a match, right? That is, I think, people, purpose, value. Um, can you elaborate why you do and why Prime Computer fit together with you so well? Yeah, no, there may be more, but but I think there are, there are situations where we need to simplify things, right, and have an own an own system so you can move much quicker. And um, and for me, it's actually really the three things. So purpose goes in line with what I, what I said before: real problems, real challenge. And we don't mention them all, but everything around trust. Who can you trust? Fake news, fake data, fake products, right? So digital identities for things, the entire health situation, not only with the pandemic, but everything behind the climate situation. The data, the ownership, and all of that security. So there's a real challenge, and 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 for me, it is important to work on significant things. So I, I mean, I, I may like chewing gums, but I don't want to be engaged in chewing gums, right? With with my time. So I believe for me, it is something. There's a big why. There is significance, and and if I feel there is something, and also something which helps addressing some of the real problems, and then it excites me, uh, and and I love being part of it, right? So the second, which is the most important from all these people. Um, there's nothing more powerful when, when people come together, which are inspired, which are driven, which have a passion and want to work together and do things. And the opposite is toxic people, right? So people which have me, 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 energy suckers, which just want to complain and tell you why not, time thieves, which just want to write talk to you without any any purpose and, and I don't like that so I like I like being with people which are driven inspired appreciates the challenge but said you know what it's hard but I do it either way be, be, because I want to do it right and and, and so I check people and uh, throughout my years I've met many 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 people in different countries different cultures right different nationality and and and, and for me being selective on people is even or at least as important as, as being selective on purpose. And the last one is just very, very personal, is value. I, I'm, I'm not looking for jobs, engagement or, or something. Um, I want to make a difference. And, and, and you can make a difference if you bring value. 
right? So, and value can be anything. It can be learning from the mistakes I've been doing and the experience, I guess, are through the mistakes and, and through a few things which eventually worked out. Um, it can be my thinking, it can be my network, whatever it is, but 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 I want to be able to bring value. If I don't bring value, I don't want to bother people. So for me, those are the three criteria. And bring that back to Prime and why we speak. And, and I remember the first time we met in that small cafe and we wanted to go into a nice cafe and we couldn't get a place, so we went to the other cafe. Um, but from the beginning, I, I just like you, Sasha, and, and not just as a person. Obviously, you're a wonderful, humble, um, lovely man with great values, but but your passion for the topic of sustainability and climate and, and combine that with doing business. I mean, that, that excites me. And then when we met, met Remo, which, which is a great businessman as well, which is a major shareholder of the company and some of the other people. So I like the people. So for me, Prime hits all three boxes, right? It, it goes after sustainability in IT. It's wonderful set of people um, and well, the third one, you need to judge if I'm able to bring value, future will tell, and you as a judge on this one. For me, oh. still, I would take the box today. Thank you so much. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. So that's a lot, that's a lot about me, um, Sasha, but let's, let, let's shift gears maybe, right? So yesterday, or the day before yesterday, um, the Federal Court of Justice in Germany took a groundbreaking judgment. I'm not sure you saw that, right? But uh, they said climate protection is a human right. And the laws in place and the rules in place in Germany are not good enough. So the government now is forced. So the climate protection laws are insufficient. So the government now is really forced by the law to have much more specific goals and, and initiatives, right, to address uh, to address a given target. Now, for you, you've been a big advocate for sustainability, right? And, and, and you must have felt a lot of pushback, opposition, because people don't want to change for the right thing. Typically, they only change when it's in front of them, right? So what, what, what are the biggest challenges and, and, and what has changed over the last couple of years since you're engaged in the topic? Well, that's a fabulous question. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, you're right. So the decision two days ago was something uh, like a milestone in the history in terms of the governments and, and restrictions and regulations. I really, really found that, um, at the, well, it might have been able to come a little bit earlier, but as you said, 99% of everything in, in the public or in the private sector comes when we face a crisis and only 1% is a pioneering company or person or government that's trying to be proactive. But I really like the decision and now with that we can go further and make the right thing. But we always change, uh, uh, challenge still today is the fact of acting, right, on issues on different issues. So that's that's has been a lot of talking all over the years since the Kyoto Protocol and um, then the Paris Agreement. But since then, I mean, there's not enough ongoing. And that's why I also think that we align a little bit. It's more about acting, about really doing something about that um, because the projected goals for 2030, 2050, well, they're nice to have, but there needs to be having something. And it's, it's to make the right choice now. And that's a big challenge for a lot of companies. And the, comp, uh, uh, the the government sector, though the awareness arises. Why right? 21? It's a huge, uh, um, um, yeah, awareness year towards uh, different topics, health, um, climate issues, but also circular economy. And we need to make decisions not only as a consumer, but especially we need to be hard and faster regulations in governments, but also in the transition and acceleration of a sustainable and circular economy. Um, there is a huge gap and we need to make this change in perspective um, to get the whole masses, right? So the companies in the public sector sees and feels it now. Also, I think everything what is, is good needs to be cheaper. Doing the right thing needs to be cheaper than doing the bad thing, right? And this is more so in terms of coal, fossil fuel, etc. So I, I personally think there needs to be sanctions uh, um, in, in that capacity at the right time, um, but to accelerate the right things. Well, um, However, in the last seven years, Michael, and uh, of nearly mm -hmm. seven, uh, the last seven years of nearly 22 years, um, you have been an executive at Cisco. You've been yeah. leading uh, um, at the end in 28 countries and have been responsible for kind of billions of turnaround. So what are you most proud of it in your time back then? Um, I'm proud as, as one of those words I 
I don't really react to, right? So the first thing comes to my mind is probably more grateful than proud. And, 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 and so I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to, to learn so much and, and, and be with the company and the market through several market transitions and, and see all different elements and, and see wonderful people in so many different countries, right? But uh, I'm really grateful for then family and friends for who they are and the support I got so that I could do what I could do, travel a lot, be away from family, be away from friends. And they're still there with me, right? And, and which, is, which is great. But um, when I really stress test, and I don't want to be shy on answering on proud. And it's not a result, it's a win, it's a market share. I think that isn't like, that, that isn't right. It, it's more what has been done with the infrastructure because selling, well, over years, billions, multiple billions of infrastructures to companies and countries uh, to see how industries could change, how companies could change, how countries actually could evolve, right? And then building things they couldn't do before and, and increasing quality of life for citizens. Um, that's kind of like cool to see. And, and, and I think all the discussions on the digital age now and sustainability, it's kind of like the same, right? But, but it's really not selling it is what you can do with it. So this goes back to significance and, and purpose. And then the second, I would go back to people, right? So what I'm, what I'm proud, but it's even more grateful than, than people, right? But uh, I mean, I just believe people and culture will define success in any transformation, in any digital transformation, right? It's that combination. And, and you have many managers still around which lead by fear. Right. So um, and, 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 and I never liked that. And, 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 and I've been exposed to that. Right. And people want me to put thread on people. I, I never did that. I, I, I just been on the opposite side. I love leading by moving forward with a vision, with innovation, focus, aspiration, people centric, whatever. So and uh, throughout the years, we've been rewarded several times as a great place to work. Right. Which uh, I think now Cisco is in the US again in many other countries. But but I had an opportunity to work with the teams in many countries, Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, Eastern Europe several times, and, and, and creating gross shareholder value, but at the same time being rewarded by the employees for a great place to work is something to be cool. But there, there is one thing I, I just may mention which stands out for me from, from all the years, and, and I think you and I must have spoken about it, is years ago when Germany was hit, well, when the world was hit, and still is hit with a major refugee crisis, and Germany has been overwhelmed with uh, millions of refugees literally coming to Germany. And, and at that time, we've been with a team in Las Vegas, big kickoff, thousands, thousands of people, MGM Arena, music, celebrating, change the world, and then you see the news and, and you see that tragedy. So uh, we didn't really know what to do, but we said we need to be able to do something. So we just used people and technology and innovation and asked just our people for ideas and concepts. And many things came, we want to have time spending with the refugees, we want to donate, do all the things we enabled that. We achieved the policy in the companies that every employee could spend five days working on the on the scene. But then there was one team in, in Hamburg um, which came up with an idea to create a refugee first response set that based out of containers and the many containers and, and, and I love the ideas. So. Love the idea. Was a partner, an innovator, an agency, and and, and some key people from Cisco, which which been doing it. And we had no time to, no money to fund it. So we actually took sales expense. And you run an organization, you know what that means if you take sales expense away. But we said it's the right thing. Let's do it. And the team created something which had a massive impact. So they created that response center, super connected, high speed broadband, connected to one of the leading university hospitals in Hamburg, which is one of the leading ones in Europe, connecting translators, hundred eighty different different language, created all of that, and, and seeing the impact it had to the refugees, to children which lost their parents, their family, have been alone, didn't speak anymore, but then when you switched on the video and they could speak to people in their own language, it changed their life again. And, and being able to do something, seeing how you can use technology to have an impact to people is, is really cool. And actually today that evolved to be a key product for Cisco in a kind of like a different way or shape, but, but being able to do things like that with technology, I think, again, makes me grateful and, and it's really cool. Yeah. Wow, really impressional. Um, yes, I've heard, obviously you told me that and I, I just recapped that story and this is right. I mean, connectivity is something which is really, really important. And you mentioned a few things, you always mentioned people and to not be able to, if in, in some sort of crisis and you stand alone um, and, and, and you have been opportunity to, to connect somehow. I mean, see the year 2020 and 21 ongoing, um, the way of how humanity now is some sort of connected, 
but kind of also disconnected, but still connecting each other through media is um, sensational. And that helped us to go through through those different times. It comes to the topic of um, there are mega, mega topics all along, right? So in the digital world um, and this decade, we can pick up, if we might, three three mega topics: digitization, AI, and sustainability. So do you have an idea or an opinion of how they match, or what do you think about that? Probably even more, right? Obviously, one of the key themes you would add security and, and, and other things, right? But uh, I mean, again, we said it a few times the world is going through fundamental change, right? So it, it's a climate, obviously, right? We're at a point of no return, super critical. Society in the Western world, we have an aging, shrinking society. Um, other parts of the world, we have hyper growth. Then we have urbanization, right? More than half of the people are living in urban centers, and that trend goes with massive speed. I think more than 200,000 people every single day move in an urban environment, causing other change and need for innovation. And then we have the hyperconnectivity you just picked on, right? Where you have I mean, three point something billion people being connected, but there are another five billion people which will be connected in the next couple of years, uh, which creates opportunities and, and, and things. And then obviously it's not only the people which are connected, but billions and billions and tens of billions of devices. And that creates everybody can communicate with everybody and everything with everything. So that creates obviously that monster connectivity layer, which leads into world of data. And, and here you are with, with, with AI, right? And, and the machine learning as well, which helps you getting more out of the data in whatever way or shapes, better decisions, faster decisions, anticipating things, critical elements, right? Like in pandemic, we could see, see things much earlier happening in, in any sector. So, and that will have significant implications on, on jobs, but that is probably for another discussion. Um, digitization, well, we are in the digital age, right? So, um, and then, well, we don't want to bother people with it, but obviously there is continuous disruption of existing business models and a curing of new ones, which makes it so exciting, right? And maybe it's the future of the prime as well. And But if you just look at the uh, pandemic and the impact digitization had, take retail, the growth and the change in the retail sector in the last 12 months happened more innovation, more shift in different models than in the last decade in the retail sector alone, right? So that it is, and, and then we see, you just imagine if we wouldn't have had digital, how would we have worked from home? How we would have handled the situation? So you already see the impact. And at the same time, you see how badly things are in the education sector, in the health sector, uh, how ridiculous it is today. There was no progress over the last decade or two. So there is pressure and, and digital is the answer and sustainability um, close to your heart and to so many people and, and a generation. It is clear that technology will, will play a key role in enabling a sustainable world. And at the same time, we'll need to lead by example, which I know you do at Prime Computer, right? And, 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 and on the future of Prime Computer, we always will have both in mind, right? On delivering sustainable IT solutions and being a role model on, on how to use it, right? So if you combine those three, you picked mega trends, AI, sustainability, digitization, that indeed could be like a magic triangle uh, and, and, and a winning formula. There may be a few more colors on it, like I said, security and others, but uh, those three obviously super, super important for now, for the next decade. And, and executing on those will define success of companies, cities and countries without a shadow of a doubt. Fully agree. Yeah. Yes. Cool. No, of course. Now let, let me go back to you, Sasha, right? Because otherwise I speak five by far too much. You are also, I think this is why we why we enjoy being together. You're also a visionary, right? So visionary thinker and act and always one, two, three steps, three steps ahead. So what do you think? What are the biggest changes you foresee over the next five years? And I know it's kind of like an infinite question, but what would you pick as the biggest change coming? I think our answers uh, would align pretty much and if I repeat that that would be boring so <laughs> I, <laughs> but but you, you're right so I agree uh, basically on everything you, you mentioned earlier but I think um, this decade is going to be the fastest developing and the fastest growing in history of mankind that's basically because we are driven by connectivity by the spread of ideas information and innovation and and those things in these 10 years I mean it is scary because um, it it will be so advanced that by 2030 actually 75% of the jobs that will be done do not yet exist, right? And this is in nine years. And this is scary because 
this comes back to education. What should we learn our, our children? Um, this whole system and everything takes way longer to be implicated. So you need to be more resilient and need to be more adaptable, you need to learn on the go, right, to the future. And if you're not willing to adapt and learn and change, you will be having problems in the future as a company, as a person, as a, as a government, and not as a long term. Um, Looking on, mm -hmm. on, on, on products or on development, I think the biggest changes, in my opinion, will be in circularity adapting. So this means um, mm -hmm. supply chain, manufacturing, um, uh, yeah, uh, product and services, actually all life, all aspects of life, because we need to be more about reusing, reducing and recycling. Um, this, this, this is just uh, uh, not to be on this green, green wave, but we are, as you mentioned, in societies where people are getting older and there's less working for us, but at the same time, we're growing expansionally um, over the last 60 years in numbers of people around the world. We're getting healthier, kind of uh, uh, that way that, that we can combat um, crises as, as we do now also will be. Um, however, this, this gives us future problems, so we need to have we have energy and resource scarcity, and those need to be adapted. And this can be adapted through a circular model along the way. Agreed. I think we're going to. I, I think yeah. yes. I think we're going to make huge advancements in quantum computing um, in the next five years. Therefore, accelerating speed and calculation, and that's going to be advancing us so much uh, as as human beings, and also making uh, projections and 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 models um, to go for. Uh, I think also clean energy will be designing hopefully more and more our life. Um, so there's a huge ship, and seeing that this is accelerating this fast, I think in next five years it's going to be. You see already countries that like Denmark that have more renewable energy than coal energy, uh, than black energy, as well. Um, I will be thinking that we are more dependent on ICT. We are already dependent and kind of, uh, um, yeah, doing all aspects of life into that. Um, so we are going to make decisions. Uh, they are going to make decisions for us, but it also takes a lot of risk. And you mentioned that earlier, it's security, right? We, our life can be hacked uh, and where we are really dependent on, on some sort of things, but also in the dependence of humanity towards companies and governments, because who controls ICT? That's mostly someone, right? Institutions. And that's gonna be also a point where we need to take care of, of regulations as well, um, which is going to be really, really important. So that sounds, it ain't going to be boring in the next couple of years, listening to you. <laughs> I, I always, you know, I'm always driven by the best is yet to come, clearly, and, and it is, right? So we have an opportunity with just the examples you gave to improve so much quality of life, people, citizens, to create new business. And, and yes, it, it's change and change will be tough, but, but it's going to be a great time ahead, yeah, beside I all the challenges. I just want I want a lot of people to be aware that is it is create it will help all the things you say, but to be aware also of, about the ethical reasons, right? Because yeah. there will be decisions making, there will be companies. That, I mean, we see it all over with social media, right? That take data that le it's leaked, but you know whatever that we are actually in an attention comp uh, um, world where where time is our currency. Right? because time cannot multiply. We only have each other 24 hours and time is what everyone wants from us. Money can be, can be multiplied, but time not. And, and if, you, if there is a solution how to make more time, well, then you're going to be a billionaire. But um, that's the next step. Um, however, I mean, with huge responsibilities, it is really important not to burn out. Um, and I mean, not just on a professional base, but with all coming, with life going fast, or with too much information. Uh, so we need to balance and we need to get our mind free. How do mm -hmm. you balance it and in your private life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that's a good one. Um, I guess, you know what, my mind is probably a bit weird. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm a good role model because I'm typically in a good mood. I guess I have that in the in the genes, and when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm happy and grateful in, in, in the morning, right? And typically I have a lot of energy. And uh, then, strange enough, I love challenge and I even love change, right? So actually, I hate status quo for for too long, right? So things need to move on, and I can drive crazy people with it. But um, <laughs> then I I firmly believe, and it has been true through my life for me, is I believe when you love what you do, you have an amazing energy. 
it, it, it just right and even in tough times uh, you have a lot of energy and even if it hits you right and, and, and it gets you have a lot of energy because you love what you do and that's true private into business but yet obviously there are times when it's just getting too much right and you need to de-stress or you're too tired so obviously you need to take care on your nutrition and, and your sleep takes that as a given but but what I think what really helps and what helps me is being surrounded by great people talked about that by energy givers because you have people, we have energy suckers and energy givers, right? So, and I think we all need to make sure we have energy givers in our in our life. And you're an energy giver as well, Sasha, right? So, and I actually really think, I mean, everybody talks diversity, but I really believe if you just only hang around with the same people, then it's also nice and then value. But but if you have different people with different experience, different age, different ideas, it also helps you to free up your mind, right? And uh, I guess my very personal formula, if I really have some of those days where I super stressed or not in a good mood comes down to a few basic things, right? I mean, I for me, it comes down to sports, doing sports. I, mean, I consume sports, but doing sports, reading and learning, playing games and being with friends. So when, when I am actually really need to crown myself pretty much every time, if I take a good book or read a good newspaper or whatever digital content and read it and learn or be able to dream and, and go in a different and different way that helps me and just getting out and moving, whatever it is, and, and being sports, just doing those two things helps me in whatever time to really to really settle down, right? And, and I'm always up for good games and then playing games. So that, that helps me. So that, that's what I do um, when I have some days. But I do it if I have good days as well, which is actually much more fun. <laughs> Oh, Michael, thank you so much for this great answer, for sharing this knowledge, uh, for being uh, uh, aspiring here. Um, we are at the end of this interview. However, 